Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs Bench. Here I am again with this special Hobby 172nd Messerschmitt 109E with a little build update. And what I'm going to do is film little segments of the build as I go through building, painting, what have you, and put it together in a, in a, in, in a part two video review for you. So here's a few slides all built now. So you can see finished all the cockpit up and put it together. Uh, no filler whatsoever anywhere. The seam line along the uh, rear fuselage was done as I suggested in the first video where I chamfered off the corners of the moulded parts a little bit to provide a panel line when, when they were put together. Did the same thing to the underside. And the, the nose where there is no seam was just simply sanded to remove the joint. I then spent some time fitting the engine and what have you in the front here. Now, I don't want to have this engine exposed. It is very nice, it's, it's genuinely very decent, especially for such a small scale, but it isn't really detailed enough to be on show for me, so I don't intend to have it on show. I've only put it in here to prove whether or not you can and fit the cowl. And I'm happy to tell you that in, in the case of the engine, the cowling will fit perfectly happily over the engine which means obviously that the engine is is probably somewhat undersized because obviously the thickness of the cowl is far greater than a metal one would have been in full size you know in in, in terms of a, a ratio the same cannot be said however of the machine guns so you get these two machine guns here the upper engine deck ones and I couldn't test fit them <laughs> no matter how I tried I couldn't test fit them without actually gluing them on uh, so that's what I did in the end I just glued them on and I can report that you absolutely cannot fit that upper cowling over the engines you see the gap there and this is fine I expected that and there it's no doubt why the kit actually includes A separate part for fitting with the use of the cowl which I now won't use I will I'll just uh, carve some material from the top of these guns until the cowl will sit sit flat and then I'll glue it into place and I'll be fine but there you go you can't have the best of both worlds without some modification if uh, perhaps if you wanted to thin this part quite substantially from the inside you might well get away with it if you bothered um, I'm not going to say I shall trim these machine guns down and fit that upper panel with glue. Uh, as you can see the side panels are fitted and as predicted no real issues with those they've, they've dropped in nicely the exhausts fit well the engine fit into place beautifully really really nicely and the mounts in effect are um, just there they're not really holding the engine in it's glued in where the exhausts are. There isn't a positive mounting if you can see under here you, this is the the bracing from the engine mount there isn't really a positive location for those I will trim those down I've literally just glued them into the corner of that cockpit floor you can just see the top part of it in here disappearing away down but yes for the scale and considering it's included in the kit it it's really it's very decent very decent indeed but it isn't up to the standards of the likes of Brasson and what have you uh, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a brass inversion come along at some point, obviously. Decal seat belts included in the in the kit. Uh, again, in this scale, I think that's perfectly adequate. And the cockpit detail itself, as you can just about see, right, moving around slowly with the light, it's extremely decent for 172nd scale, in my opinion. Doesn't really need any help at all. Uh, in terms of the rest of it, uh, the only, the, I've added the radiator uh, cowlings, they've just dropped into place without issue. At the front the oil cooler housing has a se the separate slat in the front there that you have to add and then the little uh, exit door here as well. Very very finely moulded parts these, really really thin, really excellent. And what I'm going to do with the fitting because on the nose here 
this seam here that you can see isn't meant to be there so what I did was I deliberately trimmed off the corner of that part so the fit looks worse than it is because I've deliberately trimmed that corner off and I will use super glue and talc filler to fill to fill that in when I fit the wing which I'll do when I've finished with the fuselage so really no dramas again the fit at the front you can see where, where the paint ends that's where the wing moulding ends it's perfectly adequate and likewise at the rear in between my finger and thumb it's uh, it's very very good and it's actually within the realms of uh, a bit of Mr Surfacer and Patience if you want to play it that way so there you go that's how we're fitting together up to now um, we'll take a look again before I put any paint on and here we are all built ready for paint um, nothing much to report I have glued all the nose panels on as I said I didn't want to display the interior it's a nice touch but didn't really want it so I've glued all the nose panels on and the fit is decent it isn't perfect uh, it does need a little work but it's creditable it's definitely workable given the size of the model especially I do not have massive hands it is actually a very small model underneath the nose um, there you go that's that's that filler that I deliberately put in there that's blended in no problem at all and I, and I felt that that was just the easiest way to go about um, getting rid of that joint up the top the canopies are attached the center part of the canopy is only attached temporarily with white glue at the moment um, that enables me to be able to take it off after paint and if any light overspray has got inside there I can then clean it off easily uh, I like to do that because it seems to me that every single time I glue a canopy in place before painting I end up with either overspray inside it or um, statically charged particles stuck to the inside of the canopy and it, it irritates the life out of me so I tend to try to leave some kind of access so that I can get in at least afterwards so those are done I've masked them with bare metal foil which is this is what I like to use for masking canopies because it's so much easier to see the frames to cut them out than it is with Tamiya tape and again especially on something so small that is a major advantage nothing much else to say really the fit of everything as you can see I did manage to get the slats I just uh, cut some of that mounting tab off the back of the slat and they popped into place beautifully ailerons are fitted straight and level and the, flat, uh, the flaps are fitted slightly lowered not all the way just a little for interest's sake if it'll ever focus there we go the fabric effects on the flaps are quite nice they're quite restrained but very visible nonetheless uh, and one thing I think is worthy of note that the finesse of the trailing edges as I come I haven't done anything to these this is how they came and they're so thin and so sharp all throughout the kit not just on the main parts absolutely lovely um, I need to stick that in a bit harder keeps popping off and that's all there is to say really uh, I'm going to start painting imminently I have decided to go with the uh, scheme A which is for the box art for, um, aircraft uh, pretty much an archetypal Battle of Britain scheme but by cross-referencing uh, with my wing leader publication uh, there's a little section in there uh, on the uh, JG26 aircraft I'll just grab that quickly right at the back JG26 aircraft and some interesting little uh, pointers and, and notes in there about them uh, such as the oversprayed fuselage size from the factory codes which they pretty much all had uh, the levels of wear and tear and dirt all that kind of stuff is really really well represented here so I decided to to go with that aircraft even though uh, in some respects you might argue that it's the less interesting of the ones presented you can see here the oversprayed fuselage side where the 
factory applied cereals have been painted over is quite clearly visible in this photo. In another one, not really obvious in that picture, but there's another one somewhere, she says. Can't find it now, but there's one somewhere that shows that these yellow areas were not actually masked off, they were literally just painted on the top, which I quite like too. So there are interesting facets for this uh, scheme, even though it is, at first glance, the most basic one. So that's the one I'm going to go with. I'm going to spray the upper surface camouflage first, which you might think is odd, but the reason for that is that it is vastly easier to mask the wing root from the wing than it is from the fuselage. Vastly easier. Um, I'll, so you know, I, I, I won't get a lot of overspray with the fuselage anyway, so coverage isn't going to be an issue. So I'm going to go with the upper surface camo first and then afterward put the OLM65 on and last of all I'll put the yellow theatre markings on. If I come up against anything uh, interesting I'll film a little bit and pop it in. Okay, most of the way through getting our OLM02 on, as you can see, I've basically painted the whole upper surface with it rather than trying to um, do the separate areas again because I'm not so small I've used Gunze Aqueous this is the one you can thin with water thinned with IPA this is H70 and what I've done is I've painted I've sprayed the the model with the colour as it comes and then I tipped away the paint and I added some dark grey to it with that dark grey added it's made us obviously made a slightly darker shade and as you can see hopefully I've then shaded using the panel lines and what have you as, as a sort of a reference I've put some dark shading on there and then I've got rid of that paint and I mixed some more which had some white in it so it's a lighter shade and then I've gone back in and again I've used the panel lines and the rivet lines as a guide and added some light shading which leads to what we have what you can see now which almost looks I always think looks a little petrified it looks kind of cool dried out and really aged and what I'll do now is I'll mix a very 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 thin mixture of the base the base original color I'll use Mr. Color Thinner to get a really thin easy to spray layer and I will carefully add that on top of this and just to bring back the saturation of the color um, which as you can see is it, it looks quite off and quite grey now so I will do that with each of the colours so when I, I put on the um, RLM71 camouflage areas I'll do the same thing I'll mask this RLM02 put the 71 on dark and light shade it and then blend it with a thin a thin coat overall now the advantage of doing this against pre-shading you can get essentially the same effect if you were to for example ground coat the model with white then then pre-shade it with black and then paint the RLM02 on in in Apache fashion you could get a similar result but the difference with doing this is that I can do this again with each subsequent color I've not covered up my pre-shade and then not getting it with the next color I can do each colour individually and I can use colour mixes to suit those colours. Um, the closer in colour you are with your dark and light mixes to the original shade, the easier it is to blend it uh, and, and the less precise you need to be with your airbrush to get the effect. But as you can see, what, what we've got here, we've just got some texture into it basically. And the camera stops focusing as soon as I take my hand away. We just got some texture into it, just a bit of visual interest. It's not weathering per se, but it just gives you just that little bit of je ne sais pas quoi about the colouring. Here we are ready for the RLM71. Uh, I've applied the blend coat of RLM02. With, it's heavily thin so that you can lay it down smooth so we don't end up with a, a pebbly paint finish. Um, but hopefully you can see how that's just blended the finish down and you can see that there's a a texture and maybe dare I say a complexity about the finish there without it looking obviously kind of pre-shaded in a, in a sort of cartoonish manner anyway 
it's uh, I've masked it in accordance with the with the diagram here just tap me a tape easy peasy splinter camo is uh, it's quite easy to mask for the most part especially on something as small as this it hasn't taken long um, so there we go ready for some RLM 71 okay so I've got all the colors on now uh, demasked it so here you can see the full effect RLM02 with RLM71 upper surfaces and then 65 on the sides and underneath and I thought a little bit about this because these blue uh, leading edges and then the join demarcation sorry along the fuselage side being such a small model um, I think yeah these are one inch squares on the table so you know this this isn't big um, even though these demarcations on the real thing are hand sprayed to do a full free hand edge in this scale is is it's doable but it's quite awkward so I was thinking about alternatives and I did a little testing because something I picked up when I used to work in the automotive trade I used to be a vehicle refinisher is soft edge tape um, which we used to make ourselves you can buy it with foam and what have you pieces of uh, foam and everything attached but we used to do it ourselves and you do this I can get the camera to focus this is just a piece of Tamiya tape I don't know if you can see but I folded the edge over on itself so it's just there you go that's quite visible it's just folded back on itself a little bit so when you attach it to a model bring old Dotty in here like so and you then spray against the edge that's got the folded over tape on it and I tested that it's it's quite I'm not gonna lie it's quite difficult to do with six mil tape it's difficult to get the fold in it but you can do it uh, so I got dotty out good old dotty and I applied the tape here and this I'll get nice and close and get the camera to focus up here that's the result you can see that that is a soft edge it's not a soft soft edge but it also isn't hard like it would be if you just stuck a piece of tape down and it does look really nice and it's pretty much to be honest pretty much the effect I wanted but the problem with it is um, f for this model anyway I didn't want perfectly straight lines and clearly when we're folding the tape over like this it's always going to be difficult to do anything but a pretty much straight line so I went back to good old blue tack now I haven't used actual blue tack for a little while now. I've got this stuff, um, Panzer Putty, some people call it. It's black in colour. Oh, uh, it's almost infinitely reusable. It's the weirdest stuff. If I pull it out, there we go. I'll come out of one big, horrid, weird lump. And if, if you just pull it, <laughs> it will stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch forever. But if you yank it, it snaps. It's like some weird custard-like substance. Anyway, you use it in the same way as blue tack. You get a piece of it and just roll it up into sausages, and you know, keep going until you get until you get a thin enough sausage for what you want, and then place it into position. Uh, which allows you to get that slight unevenness to the edge now again testing on dotty this edge here oh god underneath please focus camera there we go that edge there that you can see across the join line there that's what you get from the panzer putty rolled into quite a small snail uh, that is probably a two mil diameter sausage that I did that with it is slightly softer than the tape edge and as you can see from there quite easy to get that slight irregularity going on so that is the method I used in the end and here is the result slightly uneven fairly fairly firm edge but when you look at it you can see that it is it's not hard masked so it's pretty much exactly the result I was after and as per as per the copybook, come on camera, there you go. This has been X22, there's two coats on the whole thing, very, very thin. You can see the texture in that wing, 
that's moulded in. It's absolutely lovely. And hopefully you can get an idea of the the slight sort of irregularities in the paint finish. They are slight. They don't need to be in your face, especially at this, at this uh, point. So I now have to do the lighter coloured overspray patches on the fuselage. I think what I'm going to do is add the fuselage crosses before I do that so that I know where to put the overspray um, and can potentially get a tiny tiny bit of overspray actually onto the decal so that'll be the next step putting some decals on it. Okay so pop me through the decaling process here and I wanted to talk about this because some or all of you may be aware the latest few Edward kits have had these decals in them that have this peelable carrier film. Now this isn't mentioned in the instructions anywhere, uh, it isn't a sold point by Edward, they don't, Edward, they don't make any mention of it. It, it. I don't think it's a deliberate thing. Uh, the, the HDW wet, wet transfer decals where the carrier film is deliberately designed to be removable is one thing these are quite another I, I don't think it's a deliberate aspect of the decal or Edward would have mentioned it um, <clears throat> in the instructions or otherwise anyway that said this kit has those same decals um, which some may see as a good thing some may not I'm going to be honest here I don't like them at all they're not easy to use um, as I mentioned in the initial review, the carrier film is very thin and it tapers to a, an almost nothing edge, which is great because when applied, if you can get them on properly, the carrier film pretty much disappears almost all by itself. It's less great because it makes them really difficult to put on because the that thin, thin edging is really, really prone to folding over on itself, and it does. Um, anywho. I wanted to just quickly show you the difference in the look of them and, and how I've gone about using them and I, I stress here that this is this isn't a method this is very experimental it's, it's very dangerous um, but this is what I've been doing so here I'm going to zoom in and well I'm not going to pick the model up I'm hoping that you can see here the texture see that almost bubbly appearance that that has and the shine you can see the carrier film just around the edges um, and this did fold over on itself it was a pain in fact they all they all have been honestly um, where's the light I've lost it there you go so you can see that kind of texture and it looks less bad now that it's fully dry but when it's wet it looks lumpy and this side this one this has had the carrier film removed you see the difference it looks far 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 better you can see the surface detail again that lumpiness is gone you've just got the texture whatever texture you've got on your paint finish is what you'll see there I've done this throughout uh, here we have this fuselage cross try and get it in the light the carrier film all folded over on this it was so all of these decals that are here, these have all still got the carrier film on them. And you can see that queer texture that they've got. This side, carrier film has been removed and the difference is massive, I think you'll agree. All of a sudden all the surface details visible again. The finish on the decal is matte and it's smooth. It's just far superior, but as I say, I don't think this is a design process thing this is just something that happens to be possible so the way I've been doing this and I'm I'm going to try here and I'll probably fail but please bear with me if I just get this to zoom in some if it will focus let's go out a bit there we go right we've got a zoom and we've got focus I've been using my tweezers these are just ordinary, honestly quite cheap tweezers that I got off Amazon, a set of these. Um, they're quite sharp, they're quite nice, um, but they weren't too expensive. And what I've been doing is using this edge, the side edge of the point, because it's 
It's a sharp angle, but it's not sharp enough to do loads of damage unless you're off. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I've been doing, I've got to try and do this so that you can see what I'm doing and I can also see what I'm doing. It's going to be quite difficult. Right. There we go. So just taking the side edge of the tweezers, just super gently worry at the edge of it. Just nag at it. And you'll start to see quite quickly, in most cases, you'll start to build up a bit of an edge, which is where you're pushing that decal film off. When you get enough of an edge, you can grab it with your tweezers and peel. World's smallest piece of decal comes off. And simply, once you've got that edge and it's started moving, it becomes easier because you can just get the edge of your tweezers in there and start to just nibble away at it. As I said, I'm being incredibly gentle here. If you use anything sharper than this, you're liable to just go straight through the whole lot. You know, the edge of a scalpel blade or anything, by all means, go ahead and do that, but Please don't hold me responsible for the results. As I say, this is dangerous because when it works, it's fine. It's just time consuming, but it is quite, well, it's exceptionally easy to just uh, actually remove the colored part of the decal as well, damage the paintwork, yada, yada, yada. I don't know if the sounds are coming through. I am ASMR style But you can hear it as well, just grabbing that edge and picking it off. And that's literally what I've been doing. You either find a, an edge in a panel line or as soon once you get in and you can start lifting it, you you find it will it'll come away quite easily. Now this decal is completely dry. This was applied yesterday and has been sat overnight. So this is a completely, completely dry. But with experimentation and bravery, there you go. That is a very, very stark illustration of the difference in the appearance that you get from shiny, bubbly and just a little bit not quite good to really pretty decent. So once I've pickled off all the uh, carrier film, I then use my good old dry act wet and just give it a quick rub over and that just picks up any of the tiny little bits that are still there and blends the whole thing in, which is what leaves you with, with this. Which honestly looks absolutely brilliant and it's every bit as, uh, I mean, that's as good as a sprayed on marking, you know, but with a lot more effort, honestly. Um, yeah, with experimentation yesterday, I discovered that um, it's perfectly possible, and again, great deals of bravery are required. Talking in terms of bravery with a plastic model almost seems a little bit ridiculous, but hey ho, once it's <clears throat> once the, de the decal's at the stage where that initial wetness is gone, but it is still not fully dry, you can pull the film off, the the, the carry film off, and it is slightly easier it comes off in slightly bigger amounts but the flip side is it's much easier to damage the underlying uh, marking which they're, they're quite fragile at that point and they will just crumble to dust like old school um, frog decals used to when you got a bad set um, <clears throat> so much care is required but I do think the effort's probably worth it but as I say, I'm at pains to point out, this is something I've been messing about with. This isn't an advertised aspect of these decals. It just appears to be a side effect of, of this new thing. But honestly, they're quite hard to fit. In fact, the walkway decal, I tried to fit the walkway decal on this wing. And the 
they carry a f I mean walkway decals are a pain at the best of times right but they carry a film all curled up and folded up on itself and it just it proved honestly impossible I couldn't get a nice result no matter what I did and being such a thin and fragile <coughs> decal it, it uh, became ruined quite quickly so I will be spraying the red walkway lines in um, once <clears throat> once all these other decals are done so yeah not ideal um, I'll talk more about this in the wash up but <coughs> excuse me if I was going to do another one of these which is unlikely honestly but if I was I I do think I'd probably spring for an aftermarket decal sheet to go with it so there we said it anywho I'll carry on and I'll catch up with you in a bit so we're a bit lighter down the line now and I've got the rest of the decals on or as many as I'm going to put on anyway I do have stencil phobia I don't mind admitting it and I just think life is too short sometimes um, and uh, honestly the, the the way this carrier film curls and flips over on itself has made it all so awkward anywho I showed you earlier how to how I've been scraping off this carrier film um, and it's inherent uh, issues with doing that. Um, you can see on this wing marking, we've got little bits of black missing, and that's where it comes. It's come away with the backing film and all the agitation from the tweezers. Right. Anyway, uh, after I filmed the last bit, I watched a video by uh, my good buddy Drew Manton, who's also a big fan of the. <laughs> a big fan of these decals, uh, and he's. Uh, was experimenting with using white spirit to remove the carrier film so the uh, blue and white stencil the dragon and the s shield here that you can see these were uh, applied probably an hour or so ago they're pretty much dry uh, and you can i hope see that the carrier film is still there um i don't have white spirits in my arsenal but i do have this just an old and it is container with turpentine in the old odorless and it's got m many various bits and pieces of thinners from ammo washes once they've gone bad and things like that anywho it's turps it's not white spirit uh so i decided to see if it would do the same thing and i'm going to show you now that it in fact does i'll try and get the light on it so this is just moistened this cotton bud it's got a little bit of turps on it just enough to dampen the surface and I don't know if you can see but as soon as you start to rub the surface with the cotton bud please focus because it would be really really handy it's just not going to are you no it's not going to focus but as soon as you start to rub you can feel it grabbing onto this de this carrier film that's like a slight dragginess or stickiness almost and it will start to to bring it off and you can see there the, the, the little collection of carrier film there where the cotton buds caught hold of it and it just melts it off and what you end up with is you see on the end there a little package of sticky nastiness I'll do the same with the dragon Being very gentle, I don't want to take the ink off as well. Obviously, once this carrier film's gone, the ink is then uh, naked, and it's quite easily damaged. So this doing the doing it this way has the advantage that. Um, the, the the chance of mechanical damage to the colours here is is less. It's not it's not nil, but it's certainly less. Um, and where you're in tight 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 spots like here, the bottom around this uh, wing join detail, things like that, you can still quite happily rub away the film. We're getting the tweezers in. Uh, to scrape at it can be quite awkward. I've also, through uh, messing and experimenting with the rest of the model, taking the carrier form off of the, st the stencils is really, really easy doing it this way. Uh, 
And I'll reiterate, I am being extremely gentle with this. And I've gone out of shot, there we go. It's not a lot to see, I'm afraid. I can see it with my eyes, but basically it's like when you get some a free gift on the front of a magazine and you take off the free gift and you're left with that layer of gum and if you rub it with your thumb it rolls up and it rolls off and that's basically what this is doing with the carrier film it's just taking it off really quite quickly and easily now that's all well and good but the big issue that struck me as soon as Drew started talking about doing it this way is Hands up, who uses, let's say, enamel washes, oil washes. Um, a lot of us, right? I do. Um, all my weathering um, arsenal is mostly enamel and oil based products, which are um, removed and worked on with terps basically so just a, the obvious conclusion here is do make sure when using these decals on these these Edward and so it seems special hobby kits make absolutely sure you put and I will a layer of clear in between these decals and any weathering you're going to use because if I had have gone ahead and started to add a wash to this without having watched Drew's video I would have probably neatly removed most of my decals so that was really the point of this little addendum yes it's nice and easy take off this carrier film with terps with white spirits but more to the point make sure that if your weathering arsenal contains those things to use a clear coat. If you're using the flory type washes, the more water based and, and pigment based stuff, you'll be fine. But anything that uses terps based type things, it, it, you, you're going to find yourself in a nasty mess if you don't uh, make sure and use a clear coat. So that's it for this segment, and I'll catch you in a bit. Well, here we are, we finished with the decals at last. Uh, as I pertained earlier, um, the the peely method works fine, I was comfortable with that, but also the, the rubbing off with a cotton bud and some sort of solvent was okay. Now I was using turpentine because in Drew Mountain's video he mentioned white spirit and turpentine is the closest thing I have to that. Uh, I, I then tried enamel thinners after I'd spoken to camera uh, and enamel thinners was fiercely effective, uh, actually even more so than turpentine. So. If anyone wants to use that method, I'd suggest probably using enamel thinners to rub off the carrier film. Uh, but it also does reinforce my point where I mentioned that uh, if no protective layer was added between the deckling stage and weathering, if you're using enamel washes, you're going to find yourself in a mess very quickly. Not necessarily unrecoverable, but definitely in a mess. Anywho, uh, the next stage was weathering. I glossed the, the decals in two coats of X22 just to make sure there was a, a decent layer between the decals and the paint. And then panel lines were added in with along with the, the, the beginnings of a bit of dirt along the belly here on the radiator flaps and whatnot. So underneath I've used panel line wash blue grey it's, it's on the same sort of tonal value as the blue the RLM 65 and it's just it's, you can see here a few, a few shades darker and this is how you want to play it uh, if you don't want your panel lines to look super stark you just pick a colour that's a few shades darker than what you're working with so undersides and sides were panel line wash blue grey upper works where I put wash which wasn't in very many places to be honest I've, I've really only put wash on the removable panels uh, I used the the good old old style MIG Productions dark wash which is quite dark this is a transparent bottle and this is pretty dark stuff uh, the neutral wash also made an appearance that was used in the wheel bays and in a few areas un under here where I wanted to start to get a bit of dirtiness going on 
Uh, I used as a reference for the amount of dirt and the patterns. I found a beautiful underside photograph in uh, in the Wingman, the Wing Leader Productions. This is volume four, photo archive number four. And you've got these two studies here of a captured one, which the RAF were flying. And you can see there the weathering patterns on the underside. Glorious detail. So I've used that as, a, as inspiration for where to, to start placing the dirtiness. And I just wanted to, uh, yeah, oil brusher too little tad of starship filth used around the wing roots uh, for the for some ground crew mess when all that was done uh, the model was relatively glossy because i'd had to use extra x22 over the top of these decals uh, so i had to mat it down a little bit uh, i didn't want to go fully flat because again in the wing leader production uh, product wing leader photo archive you you, you have a rattle through that and a lot of these aircraft were actually quite shiny, uh, even though they may have been dirty. So I haven't flattered it all the way down. So what I've used is the Windsor and Newton. I've got the Galleria matte varnish. This does come in satin and gloss as well. I don't have those on hand, haven't tried them yet, but this enormous jar, tub, bottle, this enormous bottle 250 mil, which in modelling terms might as well be a gallon, um, was about eight pounds, so it's pretty cheap. Uh, you can spray it directly out of the bottle. It will spray even though it's quite thick, but I don't. I decant a little bit off into an old jar and I thin it with Tamiya X20A, which is Tamiya's acrylic thinner. I did testing and I found that that gave the nicest result. And I thin it down quite a bit. And what I found is, the thinner you make this, the less matte it is. So I took some of that pre-thin stuff, had a bit more uh, X20 in it. And as you can see, what we've got is a nice sheen, but it's not overly glossy. It's definitely not matte though, and that's what I wanted. It's like the, uh, the opposing aircraft went in opposite directions. You know, the early Spitfires and Hurricanes did tend to be quite flat. And the lighter ones were shinier and the Luftwaffe went the other way. So yes, uh, all of the weathering you can see, hopefully you can see it, it's just been done with the things I've just showed you. Touch of oil brusher here and there, just starship filth, no other. Uh, and the three washes that I've showed you. So what I'm going to do next and what I wanted to just talk about quickly is add some exhaust smoke. And just deepen some of this underside staining and what i'm going to use for that is is my filth mix now this is not my idea i i've gotten this from brett green of hyperscale and i think he got it from quiz war chop or wow chop this is it's very thin it's not black <laughs> it's around about a 50 50 mix of, of black for which i just use the tamiya xf 85 rubber black that along with xf64 red brown about 50 50 the ratio is not important but when you mix those two colors together and about that ratio the likeness it has for exhaust soot when it's applied in a certain way is absolutely freaky um so i've got that in an old jar as you can see it's an old guns jar with an agitator and it's thinned with a mixture of ipa and mr color thinner and the reason is a mixture of the two is that if it's thinned purely with Mr. Colour Thinner, it tends to start to have a slight glossiness to it, which we don't want. So the IPA is there just to hold back that gloss effect from the Mr. Colour Thinner. But the next thing I'm going to do is uh, apply a little bit of exhaust staining along that wing root area um, and dirty up the underside a little more, not a lot. You have to. You have to take into account scale. This is such a tiny model. Um, if you go too far with the weathering, to me anyway, it starts to go out out of scale. I think a little bit more, a little more finesse is, is required. Uh, otherwise, the model will start to look like it's been left in a field for 20 years, which isn't the idea. 
so yeah a bit of this will go on for, for some uh, exhaust staining and some other general dirtiness uh, and then we're in the final stretch at that point we'll start um, really just a few little bits and pieces to paint and add on um, and I'll be showing you the finished model shortly alrighty then let's wrap this up shall we so she's finished now the special hobby 109e4 um, and I'll just go a quick a quick run through of my observations on the build and whatnot so initially presentation of the kit absolutely excellent really nice sturdy good good quality box great instructions very clear very well printed nicely illustrated all good there no issues um, the moulding of the parts flawless pretty much uh, mould seams where present are very very small easy to clean up um, the only thing I did find on quite a few parts uh, tiny pips like little pips of plastic on trailing edges mostly but the trailing edges are so fine um, maybe um, maybe it's something to do with getting those to fill in properly I don't know uh, detail throughout on the parts is absolutely superb uh, I, this is a 170 second kit it's tiny the squares on this map that you see around the model are one centimeter um, if I get a, a, a pot of Tamiya paint and pop it next to it it really really isn't a big model at all and the level of detail included in the plastic parts is of a standard that a few years ago most models would have said was outstanding in 48 scale never mind 70 seconds so really can't fault it on that score at all um, build wise the fit uh, the main build again virtually flawless the fit of the wing to fuselage the fuselage half the tail planes all of that absolutely brilliant little or no filler required really anywhere um, it's less excellent around the smaller nose panels the main engine cover fits real nice but the smaller panels sort of behind that and up to the windscreen and again where the engine this lower engine cowl where, where the front of the wing joins not perfect but certainly not terrible um, the only thing is with the surface detail being so sublime it is very very easy to lose it when you have to start doing rectification so that's the only reason it's really an issue at all obviously I fitted the slats in the closed position which they're not really designed to, to do it says in the instructions you can but I had to modify the parts to do it which suggests to me that it isn't really designed to be built with the flat the, the slats closed but they fit absolutely spot on as you can see and again with the transparencies the front and rear portions of the canopy are very very slightly wide compared to the fuselage sides so they overhang a tiny bit you kind of get away with it a bit because the colour is completely different you lose the joint a bit if that makes any sense so again it, it's not something to lose sleep over but it isn't perfect it is very very good but it isn't perfect uh, so that was the build it's painted with guns paints you've seen that process throughout this video guns paints Windsor and Newton clear and enamel weathering products with this little touch of oil brush here and there so no dramas there uh, decals again covered that at length in this video really haven't we but uh, I'm I'm not impressed with this new decal style I, I don't love it I'm not going to dispute that the results can be really good and uh, without trying to blow any trumpets I do think they are in this case actually pretty decent but I think it's completely fair to say that the effort required to get that good result is inordinate um, and there are flaws and faults in these decals uh, because of their weirdness that I wouldn't have had in normal ones and there are decals that aren't actually even fitted <laughs> because of their weirdness okay so decals serious minus point um six out of ten please try harder okay um moving on to the final fit up the all of the parts went together no bother really uh a few details to point out i had to drill the holes in the wings for the for the gun barrels i had to drill them out a little because the gun barrels were molded bigger than the holes in the wings 
and the undercarriage um, the location or the mounting points for the for the legs um, they're okay but they're not the most positive so especially if you were using um, plastic cement which melts things ever so slightly you you could quite easily lose what positivity there is and end up struggling with alignment they, it is it is okay as you can see the alignment is there but it, it's not foolproof basically uh, same goes for the attachment between the undercarriage leg and the, and the wheel um, the wheel didn't even have a hole in it it, it was just a little dimple it was incredibly vague I, I drilled out the dimple a little bit which helped a lot um, but you know no real dramas but uh, again it's not foolproof um, I did snap the towel wheel off during construction so that was super glued back in at the end and I also lost the pito uh, because I snapped that off but that's that's my bad um, the final finish as, as we did discuss earlier is somewhat there's a good sheen on it I wouldn't say it's shiny by any means but it certainly isn't flat and I noticed I've posted some photographs onto the Facebook page and in the photographs the model looks really quite flat but hopefully you can see well from me moving the model around in the camera here there is quite a nice sheen on it and a, a, you know differences in the finish it isn't as monotone if mono, mm, what would be the word the mono word for flatness and glossness I wonder answers in the comments section it isn't quite as uh, monochromatic as it appears in the photographs um, but all I'll say to that is I'm not a photographer I'm a modeler <laughs> I do what I can but I'm I'm not uh, by any means a decent a really a, a good photographer so um, it's clear from the parts that there are more versions to come it, it's clear anyway nobody's just going to do an e4 are they there, there are going to be other versions in the future there are unused parts uh, on on the sprues that suggest at least a tropical version but it also actually says on the sprues e slash e4 slash 7 so there you go um there are also areas around the kit where it seems obvious to me that they that the tooling has been made to allow easy fitment of photo etch parts there's a, a, a flat instrument panel on the sprues but also the oil cooler and radiator faces are just smooth there is no molded in detail so clearly um, you know allowances being made for photo etch because it isn't like they couldn't have molded that detail and you see the finesse of the detail elsewhere you'll know, you'll know what I'm getting at um, somebody did comment on the other video on the box video I did that Edward will be releasing this kit as a profi pack which makes sense because it would then include said photo etch but would otherwise be pretty much the same I'm sure with the same decals and everything else um, so yeah to, to finalize really I've really enjoyed the build I'm not gonna lie I really enjoyed it I think on balance this isn't an ideal kit for an absolute beginner uh, because of its small size its relative complexity for the scale if you compared it to older Hasegawa Tamiya Airfix kits the parts counts a lot less the parts are a lot less fiddly and a lot more chunkily molded for the most part there is a lot of um, there are a lot of very finely molded parts in this kit the separate panels around the nose uh, the lack of super positive location for the undercarriage all of that stuff none of it's an issue for someone who's got a few models under their belt but for an absolute beginner I would say it's not really the ideal choice um, if I were to do another I would get a decal sheet for it I wouldn't use the kit ones um, and I think it's absolutely crying out for the likes of a a sort of a zoom style Edward photo etch set which would have those radiator faces the seat belts the uh, instrument panel would all be part of that it doesn't really need a lot more than that I don't you know it's not crying out for resin wheels or anything like that it, the rest of the kit is really it's spot on um, 16 pounds 50% more than the FX kit uh, but honestly I'd say probably worth it um, certainly the best 72nd 109 around um, and as I say really 
you could you could uh, shrink ray this up to 148 scale and it would look every bit as good it, that is how good it is it's it's, it's superb um, and even though I did the most boring scheme <laughs> in the instructions I am rather rather fond of the way it's turned out it does look pretty pretty neat so so there you go that's the special hobby 109e and 172nd scale I thoroughly enjoyed it I suspect most of you would too if you would if if you're in the market for a 109 and honestly just on the basis of it being a genuinely really lovely kit to build um, I think most would enjoy it just for that so there you go uh, that's this one done and dusted then I've really enjoyed it I do recommend it um, so there until the next time take care look after yourselves look after each other um, and I'll see you soon Genesis out